Hey guys, what's going on? DuffKing56 here, back to continue my Let's Play of Control. Welcome, welcome back. We're at Central Executive. We are in the transition between expansions, DLCs, whatever you want to call them. We've done the first one, which is called the Foundation. The only thing that we know that we have left, mission-wise, is uh, this. To investigate the Sector Elevator. We're going to what's called a dark place. Um, no, that's not the thing inside your head that you go to when you're upset. Um, although, I mean, yeah, I've called a dark place, right? <laughs> uh, but no, I mean, seriously, it's uh, it'll be interesting to do something different. And I don't. Uh, last time we just kind of did like a bit of a cleanup episode, so it's something that I'm pretty interested in. So. Thanks, brother. Um, so we'll just kind of explore. Darkness engulfed the elevator. There was something there. Reaching for her. Trying to make her act. It was a distress call. Phaeton sensed a drowning man. A hunger in the dark. Investigation sector. Investigation sector, huh? We should check this out. Hey there, director. You know, there's one thing I forgot to do that I wanted to do, um, that I didn't get to do. Uh, that is, uh, check on a certain somebody. Also, why can't I... Yeah, I found a file on the old director, Northmore. Oh, you did? I didn't list any data death. Weird. Um, yeah, I want to check on my brother real quick because I feel like that would be something nice because they did sort of imply that my brother... Wait, there's just a file here? Wait, what is, what am I missing? What, what, what is this? Um, okay, let's read the file. Let's <laughs> see what's up. Pope's promotion. Oh, cute. Dr. Darling has personally recommended Miss Pope for a promotion based on her work ethic and assistance in advancing many ongoing research matters. See research reports blank for breakthroughs resulting from her work. Recommendation. According to her colleagues, Pope has displayed a keen eye for detail and a quick grasp of paranatural concepts. She is professional and diligent, though some of her co-workers complain of social disinterest. The review committee approves this recommendation and promotes Ms. Pope to the position of research specialist. And the funny thing about that is we, we already promoted her to the head of research, so <laughs> there's nothing much else to do in that regard for her. Now, um, yes, I want to check on my brother because they sort of implied that like he was kind of just uh, biding his time um, in like this weird coma. And now that we've done the, whatchamacallit DLC, the uh, Foundation Expansion DLC, why not just go check him out? Damn. He's got a beard. Actually, let's check his EKG. Is he in sinus rhythm? Let's see. Let's see if I can find it. Yeah, he's got P waves. Alright. He doesn't need rate control. There's no rapid ventricular response. Right, that's enough mumbo jumbo for now. That's I've already just revealed my power level a little bit. Uh, not trying to flex, obviously. I'm a fucking idiot. Let's go. Fade and rides the elevator. Darkness engulfed the elevator. There was something there. A presence. Jesse Faden could hear it. A call. It was faint. Reaching for her from a dark place. Faden was sensitive to visitations. She had them all the time. From her guiding star and the previous director. She was the perfect receiver. As if she'd been made for this. Faden paused to feel it. The force at play here. It was changing things around her, subtle. Trying to make her act. Faden didn't like that. Her guide felt it too. Polaris didn't flare up in defense, as with the hiss. So it wasn't all bad. Not a hostile transmission. It was powerful, but it was coming from far away. And made weak because of the distance. It was a distress call. Faden sensed a drowning man. A man desperate to escape. She sensed something else, too. A hunger in the dark. Not unlike the hostile resonance. Waiting. She knew that desperate acts can have grim consequences. It was this, more than the man's despair, that made her follow the call. The elevator lights winked back on. The darkness receded like a memory. There was a new button on the elevator control panel. Investigation sector. Faden pressed the button. The elevator doors slid shut with practice bravado.
And as you can see there, that's Alan Wake typing on his altered item. Actually, no, is the typewriter an object of power, technically? I can't remember. Either way! Ah, <sighs> okay. Deep breath, everybody. We're going to the investigation sector. Please, for the love of God, don't be some scary horror sequence, because I, I just don't want that right now. I want to shoot people and be cool. All right, let's do it. Um, motherfucker. Really? Really, is this, is this... <sighs> okay, all right. Um, oh, fire break section. The sector head off, as you can see down here in the north. Or the south, I mean. Um, all right, we have no other choice. Um, Hello? Anyone here? Guess not. Lots of stuff to read, though. That's always something that's nice. Let's start with this file. Correspondence. Casey Inquiry. Mr. Dennis, a request came through recently from an FBI agent asking for all our files on Bright Falls, specifically on the disappearance of the author Alan Wake. Per the Interagency Information Exchange Agreement, I had some paper pushers gather up a folder of all the pre-approved files. Don't worry, all the inappropriate material is either missing or redacted. But I'm writing to let you know that we received this request from a special agent named Alex Casey. Sounds familiar, right? That's because Alex Casey is the name of the fictional detective in those hard-boiled crime books Alan Wake wrote. Pretty interesting that an FBI agent sharing a name with the most famous character Wake wrote is looking into a case dealing with a writer's fiction coming true. I think this is worth looking into, but what's your opinion? Just give the word and I'll start surveillance on this guy. Special Investigator Gleason. Seems a lot more crowded than the rest of the Bureau. Kind of does, doesn't it? The Darling Investigation. Official findings report. Re Dr. Casper Darling, internal confidential. Per authorization from Mr. Kirkland, internal investigation D 084 5 was launched into the ethical practices of Dr. Casper Darling, head of research. Despite the accounts of anonymous blank regarding inhumane treatment of a blank currently housed in the Bureau, our official findings regarding this were inconclusive. Numerous obstacles arose during this investigation. The majority of blank sector personnel seemed to be wholly unaware of any such blank contained there. One blank confirmed the blank's codename to be blank, but all files pertaining to that name were inaccessible, being classified under the highest clearance level. Investigators were similarly blocked from entering the blank research wing to interview the staff. The matter was further complicated by the lack of clarity on whether non-human paranatural entities warrant humane treatment. While this investigation cannot address any charges against Dr. Darling, we do recommend an investigation into blank research. And of course, further request to go to the report. So, uh, oh, there's like, there is so much stuff around here. Uh, we'll go here. Missing agents. Mr. Kirkland, here are the latest agents confirmed missing, presumed dead from the containment breach yesterday. Agent Jonathan Connor, researcher Ezra Cruz, Agent Caroline Dempsey, Agent Lindsay Malcolm, Agent Charles Murray, Agent Derek Shaw. Letters of condolence will be delivered to you to sign prior to sending them to their families. You'll be updated as soon as additional confirmations are made. Also, per your request, a network engineer checked how many cases were backed up digitally. Unfortunately, a large number of active investigations were not archived yet, and the only hard copies of reports exist behind the firebreak. They're lost, I'm afraid. Um, hopefully not forever, right? Aha. There's so much shit to read. Holy crap. Keystone inspection. Mr. Kirkland, we stopped at Keystone on our way to the target AWE like you asked. I'm sending my report directly to you to try to keep a lid on this Groom and Morales dissertation issue. We didn't find any sign of them there. Given their records, it's possible they've switched teams like you suspected, but I don't think that's the case. An event definitely occurred here in Keystone, and I think Grumman and Morales got caught up in it. The entire population has vanished into thin air. Caught up in it. The entire- wait. Oh my god. The entire population has vanished into thin air. Reminds me of the ordinary case, but that was just the adults if I'm remembering the file correctly. This is different. I think our guys are casualties, not traitors. If it was an AWE, it seems to be over. We walked through the whole town, the only strange thing we noticed were markings on various buildings. Two overlapping circles with a dot in the shared space. Could be unrelated. I'll show you the pictures when I get back. In the meantime, you should send a team out here to cordon this place off. Maybe get the comms guys working on a cover story. Sincerely, uh, I think it was Keenan was the guy's last name. Okay. 
Let's keep rocking here. Let's keep it exploring. Wow. Wow. Tractor procedures. Burrow tractor, an altered item. Item is not in bureau custody. None known. A Frank Elk tractor, olive green. Dried blood on the grill when last seen. Item is capable of vocalized responsive or responses or growls and unmanned locomotion. Considered highly aggressive and dangerous. Oh my god, like a tractor? The item first came to the Bureau's attention after the death of William Burrow, owner of Burrow Farm outside of Trenton, Texas. Local authorities arrived on scene after an employee found the mutilated body of Mr. Burrow beneath his tractor. Police arrived but were immediately driven away by the tractor. Panicked calls to federal authorities were intercepted by Bureau communications staff. A team was dispatched. Upon arrival, the agents approached the item. It responded by growling like a bear. Three agents were injured when they tried to detain the item, which escaped. Aerial searches for the item are ongoing. Speaking to Mrs. Burrow only revealed that she had a domestic altercation with Mr. Burrow earlier the night of the incident. Whether these events are connected is currently unknown. Okay. Um, we're getting, like, indication we need to go into the right corner of the map here. Which, don't worry, we'll get there. <laughs> we're just taking stock of this entire area first. Ethics investigation. Interesting. Read the Prime Candidate Program. Per authorization for Mr. Kirkland, internal investigation P-142-9 was launched into the legality of the prime candidate program blank by the Federal Bureau of Control. Since all known subjects relevant to the investigation used executive privilege to decline interviews, very little first-hand information was gathered. However, anonymous sources and documentation declassified by Mr. Kirkland both paint an alarmingly clear picture of systematic blank with blank. Blank were brought into the oldest house and placed under blank examination and testing with the aim of appointing one as director upon maturity. I'm guessing children would be the one that's blanked here. This program has produced no successful cases and only resulted in the traumatic blank and paranaturally inclined blank. Not only is this in breach of the Ash Act, oh, Ash, uh, but it flies in the face of basic human blank. This investigation team unequivocally blanked the prime candidate program and recommends that it be canceled, I'm sure, or uh, disbanded or whatever immediately. And a full report to come if we, you know, read what we're supposed to read here. Okay. Chill, self, chill. I'm like already like on high alert here, unfortunately. Uh, what's this guy? Oh, an attractor supplement. <laughs> Note, miscommunication led to a local coroner examining the body of William Burrow. Burrow William, male, Caucasian. A 33-year-old man found dead on his property per police report. Remains obtained for coroner's, coroner's office also include blood, urine, bile, stomach contents, and bone fragments. Autopsy finding. Blood force injuries. Head. Lacerations. Left ear, cheek. Blood force injuries. Extremities. Force injuries. Dislocation of the right knee. Complete avulsion of the right upper extremity with associated fracture of the proximal right humerus. Extensive trauma abdominal region. Complete avulsion of multiple organs, including stomach, heart, liver, pancreas, kidneys, and portions of the large and small intestine, all missing from the scene. Conclusion. It is my opinion that Mr. Burrow's death is not the result of a mechanical accident, as claimed by authorities. The removal of organs is consistent with animal attack. I think avulsion is um, like removal of something from something, right? Like a, an avulsive fracture, uh, I believe, is that much. Anyways. More stuff to... Oh my god. I'm going to be reading all day. But that's fine. I don't mind. Um, I merely say this because it's just like, holy crap. All right, let's uh, just kind of continue reading here. The Underhill background. Official findings report. Uh, oh, Dr. Raya Underhill. I remember them. Dr. Raya Underhill is a professor at the University of Woodrow in the United Kingdom, where she teaches biology with a focus on botany. Dr. Underhill once worked with the Bureau as a parabotanist stationed in the research sector of the oldest house. She served with no incidents or demerits and is praised by those who formerly worked with her, including Dr. Darling. Dr. Underhill has no known connections to paracriminal organizations or any record of bridging her NDA since leaving the Bureau. Her civilian behavior has been ideal, with the exception of her ongoing personal relationship with Dr. Darling that appears to have begun during their time as co-workers in the research sector and revisited intermittently ever since. Depending on the duration of her work in the oldest house, it may be required to have both parties sign a relationship clearance form. This investigation has found no compelling reason to deny Dr. Darling's request to offer Dr. Underhill an interim position with the aim of finding a solution to the mold threshold issue. Oh, that's so awesome. Um, so that's how she got back involved in the Bureau. Very interesting. All right. Director investigation. They're investigating everybody. So I feel like this is like a way of kind of trying to close out some aftermath of the initial story. Per authorization for Mr. Kirkland, blank was launched into the blank of director Zachariah Trench. I'm guessing it's suicide or death. 
A recent change in Blink witnessed in Director Trench, including aggressive Blink when Blink with other staff has been observed. However, this investigation is aimed at interpreting this issue rather than proving it. Notable Blink between Director Trench and Dr. Darling has been witnessed by numerous Bureau staff. Although both declined to meet for an interview on the matter, witness accounts suggest their arguments center around the Dimensional Research Wing and the Blink kept inside. I'm assuming that's the Hedron uh, amplifier, the Polaris. However, no evidence exists to confirm Director Trench's blank is anything more than interpersonal disagreements. This investigation has concluded that Director Trench's behavior is not indicative of any blank and that his fitness to lead is not in question. Refer to a further report. Official warning. Kirkland, I'm growing tired of your blatant attempts to lay your incompetence at my doorstep. I know that you want this to be true, but you are head of investigations. This failure is your responsibility. Oh, I wonder if Kirkland is going to be the eventual final boss. What did you think would happen holding a dangerous specimen in the investigations? The containment sector exists for a reason. They're better trained and better equipped for this type of work. In fact, they have admirably taken on certain AWE monitoring responsibilities that your staff are no longer capable of. This happens more and more now. And don't think your petty internal investigations have gone past my notice. You are a worm. Everything I've done has been for the benefit of the Bureau. The Prime Candidate program only failed because of Darling. You are both failures, plotting against me. You are traitors, but the truth will emerge out of you. You are choosing to become my enemy, Kirkland. You don't want to be. Zachariah Trench, Director of the Federal Bureau of Control. Or maybe whatever uh, um, Kirkland is keeping here is eventually going to be the final boss. But I hear it's very difficult either way, so something to consider. Cauldron Lake Update to Chief Investigator Dennis. It happened again, third time this year. Something certainly has it out for our blank. Could be raccoons. I wonder if it's garbage. Uh, the locals certainly complain about them enough, but why the hell would raccoons keep going after a monitoring station? Doesn't add up. Anyway, I've got a bureau tech going to the site next week to take a look. Next on the list of recurring problems is the staff at the Lake House Research Station. How am I supposed to effectively keep an eye on Blank Lake if they won't let me see any data? Hell. I don't even know what they're researching out there. We need to petition them again to share their info with investigations agents. It's only a matter of time before this blank hits again and I want to be prepared. Anyway, if anyone in HQ asks why the Bright Falls report is a little thin this month, tell them it's because we couldn't take any readings. In the meantime, I might invest in some raccoon traps. Sincerely, Agent Estevez. Okay. Interesting. Cauldron Lake. I feel like, uh, is that the, the, the Alan Wake Lake? I don't know. One more thing to read, I think. Staffing issue. Doctor, uh, Mr. Dennis. So yes, there's an increase in AWE cases, and yes, it would be a good idea to put together a special task force to examine exactly why that is. However, it seems that a tiny little detail has slipped through the cracks. We don't have the damn staff. If you expect us to detect, investigate, and process more AWE cases, you need to give us more people. It's simple math. Between the staff we lost at the Hartman thing and the ones who left for other departments after Kirkland quit, we're barely managing to keep up with the workload. Hell, just filing the paperwork for all the altered items we left behind in the sector has been an ordeal. Another thing, and this is going to sound paradoxical, but we have an overcrowding situation. This lobby isn't meant to accommodate a whole sector's worth of staff. We put forward a motion to move investigations to a more suitable location months ago. It better not be sitting on your desk. The people are getting restless in Kirkland's interim replacement. It's your job to handle it. Best regards, Agent, uh, whatever his name, I forgot it. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right. Uh, resignation letter from whom? Let's see. To whom it may concern is with great anger and regret that I tender my resignation as a head of investigations for the Federal Bureau of Control. I do this in protest of the rampant disregard for my department's blank. My staff cannot continue to work in these conditions. Previous requests and warnings have fallen on deaf ears, so I must now rely on my actions to speak louder than my words ever could. I blame the situation on our blank, who has routinely ignored my requests for assistance in reclaiming the parts of the investigation sector lost to the blank loose inside. I will never forget the screams of brave agents begging for us to open that firebreak. I will carry that shame for the rest of my days. The blank has failed his agents. I shall never forgive him for that. Sincerely, William Kirkland. Jeepers, man. That's, uh, something. So, uh, I'm assuming that we can't open this until we transfer. Hmm. It's not working. Yeah, thought as much. Probably a leak power somewhere. I thought as much. There. Now that gate should open. Beautiful. At least I hope it's beautiful. 
Um, the sector head office is this way, but I don't think we're missing anything from it. This is just the head office here, which we went through. Okay, so let us continue. I don't see anything that we might have missed over here, so let's go. God, that looks a little bit scary, don't you agree? And one more file, specimen escape assessment. Regarding incident A-49, the purpose of internal investigation X-039-7 is to examine the containment failure of specimen SI-1 that resulted in the deaths of blank agents. An, uh, an inspection report of the containment equipment three days earlier showed no faults. Investigators suspect human error to be the cause, yet no department has provided any evidence to support this. Technicians were able to recover the researcher's notes on the specimen from the internal network. On the blank of blank, the specimen began displaying a sharp increase in aggressive, I'm assuming, behavior. Cross-referencing that date with various logs found only two events inconsistent with the sector's daily routine. One, the air filters were changed, and two, an hour prior to the incident, a civilian named Alice Blank entered the sector regarding an unrelated investigation. Given their connection to the same AWE case, it's likely that Mrs. Blank's presence is relevant to the specimen's escape and to the Blank. Investigation is ongoing. That's the um, agent, right, that we know that uh, is involved with Alan Wake. Interesting. Welp. Let's claim this control point. Oh wait, there's something over here. And obviously the rule of three, I'm assuming, applies. Oh my god, Jesse, you are just amazing, aren't you? Blessed Organization. Paracriminal Profile, the Blessed Organization. This group slash individual has operated outside the Bureau's notice for decades, perhaps longer, displaying a level of skill and caution rarely seen in paracriminal groups. A review of past cases has found various mentions of their activity over the years. In 2016, a production company called Blessed Pictures was connected to an altered item case, as well as the death of an agent from exposure to illicit paranatural materials. Aha! This is the Blessed Pictures company that gave us the movie camera. In 1994, a Los Angeles-based public speaker named Chester Bless was involved in the illegal use of an altered item. In 1988, a business called Blessed Repair and Service was suspected of involvement with an object of power case, perhaps even creating it. None of these businesses or individuals have ever been located. However, their connection to appearances of altered items and objects of power is too direct to be considered circumstantial. An arrest order has been issued for any persons believed to be involved with the Blessed Organization. Refer to file 7-39-0922 for a full report. Or will we? Or will we? The rule of threes, everybody. Do we know each other? I feel... this feels familiar. I can't seem to... I, I've forgotten it. I'm sorry. I'm... My name is Alan Wake. friend Tom. Tom Zane. There's nothing to worry about. Tom. The poet. The diver. You, you look different. That was just a, a role. A character. The protagonist I played in my, my old film. I'm a filmmaker. An old terror like yourself. We're working on this together, remember? An artistic collaboration. You need a drink. Endless. 
darkness. Nothing holds still. But we're very close now. You've been riding. I found a way to escape. It'll work this time. Riding? You found a way! No. I, I don't... Wait. There's something. It's my double. He's out there. I, I've seen yeah, him. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nothing to worry about. I'm dealing with him. It's fine, my friend. Let me handle him. You've met him? What the hell? Now, now, come on. You misunderstand me. That was Alan Wake, the writer who went missing in that AWE case I read about. What's he doing here? What is he doing here? And Thomas Zane was with him. The poet. No, wait. D -d he was a filmmaker. I, I always remember that wrong. Oh my. What the fuck? What's through here? What is going on? I almost want to ring the bell again, but I can't. Um, well. Hey there. Turn off that static, man. That shit's loud. Oh, we're taking all the sound off? God. Oh, the key! That turned the light off? Man, that's... It's getting me a little bit on edge. Dr. Emil Hartman was devoured by hungry darkness. Became the thing that had been Hartman. Broke loose. Killed everyone it could. Lurking, roaming, waiting. Then something else came. A resonance. The thing that had been Hartman went through another change. Hmm. Weird. Let's see what we got here. Hartman's final act. Dr. Emil Hartman was desperate. The Federal Bureau of Control had stolen his life's work. This was his last chance, his final experiment. What he'd been too scared to do before. Hartman dove into the lake, was taken, devoured by hungry darkness, became the thing that had been Hartman. Only an echo of him remained. Fragmented impulses on autoplay. Violent, bloodthirsty darkness in the driver's seat. Emerging from the lake, the thing was captured by the FPC. Brought in. Contained. Studied. The thing broke loose. Killed everyone it could. The FPC fell back and sealed the sector. The thing was alone in the dark. Lurking. Roaming. Waiting. Then something else came. Not darkness, but similar enough. A sound. A resonance. It shouldn't be a surprise. If there's one, why not another? The darkness inside the thing could have been immune, could have resisted, fought, could have been passed by, passed through with no effect. But it didn't and it wasn't. Maybe it had grown weaker over time, not aged. It was timeless. But weaker with no link to its source. A metamorphosis followed. The thing that had been Hartman went through another change. Oh God. Is Hartman the final boss? No, I know nothing about Hartman, but the thing corrupted by the hiss. No wonder why people think it might be difficult. Of course we have the key now. So let's see if we can get through our usual door. God, we're right in front of the fire break. We fixed it! We can go through the fire break at will! But you know what? We're gonna leave that for next time. Thanks so much for watching my Let's Play of Control. We continue with the dark place next time. Thanks so much, peace out and bye-bye.